So if you're looking to build the best gaming system possible, the 9700K and 9900K are two CPUs that you'd want to check out. But pairing these CPUs with compatible and unlocked Z370 or Z390 motherboards, there's definitely a few things to look out for. Whether you're building your own gaming system or buying a pre-built that's ready to go, I'd highly advise that you check out these BIOS settings that we're going to be looking at today to make sure that your CPU is not underperforming. So we've looked at these BIOS settings before, we've looked at them in separate CPU and motherboard reviews, but what I wanted to do today is just make a dedicated video for all of the power and overclocking sort of settings that you need to look for if you do have one of these CPUs in your builds. And just a heads up, these settings are not hidden or new or undiscovered by any means. They've certainly been covered in separate videos, but I don't believe there's a one video that encompasses everything you need to know for these settings. I've found that mini ITX boards are the biggest culprits when it comes to these settings and restrictions. However, they definitely still exist on popular ATX options. The motherboard that we're using for testing here is the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Pro. I use the same board to overclock the 9900K to 5.2 gigahertz, and this board handled all of that power consumption without any issues. For around 185 US dollars at the moment, I'd definitely consider checking this one out if you're starting a new Z390 build anytime soon. And of course, with all of these settings that we're looking at today, I am assuming that you have a decent enough Z370 or Z390 motherboard. I'm definitely not responsible for blowing up the VRMs on your board. Usually you can't change those settings on lower end boards anyway, so you should be safe. So first let's cover the biggest one and that's the power limit of the CPU. In short, the more power that your 9700K or 9900K is allowed to consume up to a certain point, the better the performance will be. This is a pretty simple concept to understand. If the motherboard is limiting the amount of power being fed to the CPU, the CPU can only run so fast and clock so high. A CPU that could otherwise run a lot faster, like the 9900K, will only boost to around 4 GHz across all 8 cores when limited to a 95 Watt TDP, whereas raising that to an unlimited TDP will allow an all-core turbo of 4.7 GHz. So the settings that you need to look out for here are the short duration power limit and the long duration power limit, and these settings will usually be located in the advanced power or digital power settings in the BIOS. The specific title will change from board to board, but that's roughly what you need to look out for. The names are pretty self-explanatory. The short duration power limit refers to the power limit that the CPU is set to for a short duration, and the long duration power limit refers to the sustained power limit for the CPU after a prolonged time under load. If your motherboard is limiting your CPU, you'll find that these values will be set to around 95 watts, which is Intel's spec for the Core i7 and Core i9 CPUs for Z370 and Z390. To fix that, just set the parameters to the maximum value, which is around 4000 or so watts. This doesn't mean that your CPU will now consume 4000 watts, only that it's letting it consume as much as it needs. Current limit is not usually an issue, but go ahead and set this to the max value, which is usually 255 amps. This setting should be located directly underneath the settings for power limits. If you can find a setting for overcurrent protection, go ahead and raise that to as high as possible. Again, it's just letting the CPU consume as much current as it needs at full load. You might also see a setting for VRM over temperature protection. You just want to make sure that this isn't disabled. The specific value doesn't matter so long as it's not something ridiculous as like 170C. This setting is pretty self-explanatory also. If your motherboard's power circuit is getting too hot for whatever reason, Reason, the board will lower the clock speed, voltage, and power limit of the CPU to protect things from any damage. And for those video editors out there using Adobe's Premiere Pro or those who want to leverage the QuickSync encoding on the integrated GPU, you can enable that in the BIOS. It'll be under the tab System Agent Configuration or Graphics Configuration. So with these power restrictions now removed, your i7 or i9 CPU will now be able to boost to its full potential, yielding much more performance. If you open a hardware monitor window like Hardware Info 64 though, you might notice that the CPU voltage named vCore might be a bit out of whack. In some cases, you might find that the CPU vCore is overvolting, meaning that it's providing more voltage to the CPU than it needs. Typically, if you're running an 8th or 9th gen CPU at stock frequencies, you should see a healthy vCore between 1.15 and 1.25 volts. This is something that is absolutely worth checking, as I've seen motherboards overvolt 9th gen CPUs as high as 1.4 volts under sustained load. This brings us to our next step, which is overclocking. And let's start with the CPU frequency, since this 
is fairly simple. This is the clock frequency that your CPU will boost to under load. And for most builders out there, you wanna set this across all cores. Enhanced Turbo is also a bit of a sneaky setting that was a big problem during the launch of the 8700K. Some motherboards had this enabled out of the box, whereas others had it disabled or just plainly missing. Basically, this takes the max boost clock of the CPU at stock, so 4.7 GHz for the 8700K, and tells the CPU to boost to that frequency across all cores. That's a 400 MHz overclock compared to what the 8700K would do at stock, even with a power limit removed. So this is an option that you might want to consider if you don't want to dial in a manual clock frequency. For most 8th and 9th gen Intel processors, 5 GHz is a pretty reasonable target to aim for in my opinion, and you should be able to hit that at around 1.3 volts. Now, speaking of setting a voltage for your overclock, it's important to understand the different voltage modes and their behavior in respect to CPU load. Here are the typical voltage modes that you'll come across in most Z370 and Z390 motherboards, but do note that your board might be missing one or two of these. Auto is pretty simple. It just lets the motherboard decide what voltage it thinks is best. This usually results in overvolting as we saw before though. Manual applies a constant and static voltage to the CPU. This is also not ideal because the voltage at idle and load will be pretty much the same. Offset is a pretty solid option for dialing in an overclock. Basically, it just takes the auto voltage and applies an offset to that value. You can apply both a negative or positive offset here as well. Adaptive voltage is my personal favorite though because it makes the most sense in my opinion. Basically, you're just saying when the CPU is under load, use this amount of voltage. Think of it as a voltage target for the CPU under load. The final setting that I want to discuss in this video is load line calibration or LLC for short. You've probably noticed that if you set 1.3 volts as your V-core in the BIOS, that your CPU will actually be using a lot less or in some cases more than that value. This is load line calibration. This is purposely put into effect by the motherboard to prevent overvolting the CPU when it finishes up duration under load. The difference between the V-core that you set in the BIOS and the one that the CPU uses under load is called V-droop, and typically less is more desirable, especially if you're going to be overclocking and you want the best CPU stability possible. Most motherboards will have a few settings ranging from a larger V-droop to almost nothing, and in some cases, like with the Z390 Aorus Pro, you've actually got options for positive V-droop, although that's not something that I would personally recommend. On this motherboard, I've selected the Turbo LLC mode, and this gives us an extremely minimal voltage drop when the CPU is under load. So there we have it, a brief tuning guide for your Z370 and Z390 motherboards to keep your CPU running at full blast like it should be. I believe these steps to be pretty important if you do have either the 8700K, 9700K, or definitely the 9900K. And of course, I don't expect a lot of people to go digging around through their BIOS in their new build and exploring all of the settings. Especially if you're buying a Z370 or Z390 pre-built system, you just expect that system to be fully operational and tuned when it arrives, but that's not going to be the case. So guys, hope you found this helpful. If you did, feel free to give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it around with your friends. Also, feel free to leave your comments down below and I'll be sure to answer those. As always, guys, huge thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.